So apparently after a six, uh, some cover an eight hour talk on some uh, in some uh, MSMs that Blinken essentially came out of this marathon talk with Netanyahu and said uh, that they're trying to help get aid into uh, Palestine. Uh, after this whole talk, a lot of people actually were worried that this was some sort of talk about uh, war. Uh, I actually saw posts of people saying, oh, gosh, they're they're out of this talk. We're going to get an announcement of, you know, what's going to happen as far as war. Uh, this was more just trying to get aid into uh, Palestine. Uh, it actually says that Blinken and Netanyahu at one point actually had to go into some sort of bunker. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what they're saying. It says the U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken held more than six hours of talks with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu uh, war cabinet on the unfolding humanitarian crisis in the Strip. And it says, and the two briefly sought shelter in a bunker during an air raid alert. The unexpectedly long meeting, it's extended into wee hours on Tuesday, disrupted by sirens blaring as Israel's Iron Dome missile defense system intercepted uh, rockets from us while Israel's army remained on standby for a possible ground assault on the Strip. Now, that that uh, ground invasion has not happened yet, and I think it's very strange that they spent even six hours in this meeting. What was actually talked about in that meeting? And then, of course, we have brand new news that U.S. forces are deploying. No surprise here. If you've been watching my show, we, of course, had military Fugel families uh, that are active and retired uh, saying that people are actually getting the orders to go out, and they, they were two or three weeks before this even happened. So. Uh, no surprise there, and we told you there would be more deployments. Now there's 2,000 uh, of the rapid response force. So we'll talk about all of that tonight on uh, Marfugal News. So uh, before we get started, we are independent. If you guys do want to support us in a different way and get yourself a really, really amazing uh, generator, then you would definitely want to go for the Energy Flex 1500. This is a solar generator, so you can get power from the sun. Uh, as long as you grab yourself some panels, you'll have unlimited power. You'll have power as long as the sun comes up, you will have uh, the ability to have power. Uh, and again, that's something very amazing, especially for those who do not have the space or maybe an apartment that can't store a barrel of fuel, uh, that this is a great way to go because obviously as long as you have the sun rises, you will have power. Uh, go to marfuglenews.com energy. This is silent. Uh, it is modular, meaning you can actually expand it up to 96 batteries. They work a lot like Lego bricks. They essentially stack, and you can even mod them. There's mod bricks that you can put in between the head unit and the batteries, and it will actually change the overall performance of it. It will add uh, performance features, or it will even add uh, charging features. So there's all sorts of cool stuff you can do with it. Other than that, though, it is silent, and it can run inside. So if you combine those two, that is how you go gray. Uh, that is how you can go uh, stealth. That way nobody will know that you have power and you can keep going. Not to mention this is good for any anybody. Uh, I use mine for construction work and I actually can go and use my tools anywhere. Every time you've ever thought to use an extension cord somewhere or didn't have a power source, this thing comes in clutch. Uh, again, you can plug in all sorts of stuff into this. So again, go to marfuglenews.com slash energy I-N-E-R-G-Y, and make sure to use the code MARFOOL. All right, and then, uh, Dex, why don't we go over uh, the evacuating 28 communities near Lebanon border? Well, as we have talked about, uh, specifically the, the whole notion that there may be multiple fronts, um, this is one of those locations, and we've seen um, the Hez lobbing in uh, missiles a couple of times, and there's been retaliatory actions back and it's very clear uh that is is expecting something big to come from there and they've done it and they expect that because they're now evacuating 28 communities uh in the northern area which would all be along that border with lebanon so a big sign uh it kind of reinforces what a lot of people have been thinking that hey this uh this ramp up into the strip has been stalled and it was stalled probably because they're worried about having multiple fronts. And if they put all of their resources down into the strip, which is in the south, uh, they may leave themselves vulnerable in the north. 
And as we talked about over the last couple of days, the, the, just the original order to try to evacuate 1.1 million people, uh, a lot of folks didn't realize that this isn't telling them to get out of the country or out of the Strip. Uh, they can't. They are not allowed to leave the Strip. They can't go somewhere. They have to essentially go down to the southern part of the, uh, the Strip. So a 25-mile-long Strip with 2.2 million people all of a sudden turns in, into where you have the 1.1 million people then going over to the other half with the other 1.1 million. Then you have 2.2 million people in an area that's about 13 miles long. Uh, that is incredibly. They were already densely populated. If you see top downs, it's like building on building on building, no space in between. It's, it's insane. It's already crazy uh, de densely populated. Now it's going to be even more densely populated. And now they're looking at the specific areas that are getting told to, to get out. Of course, now uh, we have the U.S. Marine Rapid Response Force is heading to waters off of Israel's coast. Now, they're deploying U.S. Uh, troops at this point, and it says that the UN, uh, UN Marine Rapid Response Force is headed to the waters off the coast of Israel, and it says the Rapid Response Force is 2,000 Marines and sailors is being sent. It will join an increasing number of U.S. warships en route, uh, en route uh, to Israel to, in an effort to send a deterrent message to Iran and the other Lebanese militant group, Hezbollah, according to a defense official uh, familiar with the planning. So, at first, again, when all of this originally came out, there wasn't really much information beyond that. Now, first of all, for those of you that are wondering what the uh, Rapid Response Force is, there's a bunch of other kind of titles for what this is. Uh, the closest kind of definition is of a Rapid Reaction Force. Now, they have Immediate Reaction Force. They have like Immediate Response Force. They have all of these, and they're essentially just... Uh, they are groups that are not uh, not like SEAL Team, you know, SEAL Team Six level, uh, but they are rapidly deployable troops. So they are specifically meant to get somewhere and to get somewhere very quickly. So they they can rapidly deploy to any part of the world. They're basically ready to go. And again, these guys are always ready to go. Uh, what we're about to talk about next is how the DoD is actually asking a whole variety of other troops to uh, to get ready. That's something that is definitely going to be even crazier. But it says a rapid reaction force is a military or police unit designed to respond very short frames to emergencies. Uh, that is, of course, the definition of what this is. Now, as far as uh, the rapid response team made up of 2,000 uh, Marines, these guys could either drop in, they could drop in by plane, they could go in by boat, they could go in all, any number of ways. As far as the where they're deploying, though, um, you know, you got to think about it. They're saying that this is to deter something from Iran or something else. Uh, I think that these guys might be used for something different. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, Dex, when we see 2,000 troops um, essentially deployed, and they even say that they may be helping with things, uh, that we already have special forces. They already said that they were going to send in special forces. Now they're actually sending in these QRFs or rapid, uh, rapid re uh, response force, these RRFs in. What the heck are these going to be for? Well, yeah, I, it seems very clear that there's a lot of, uh, a lot of concern over the North. And I think that getting these folks in there quickly is probably to help reinforce what is may already have uh, or may not have as much of in the North. Uh, but I also think that as we talk about our special forces being there and potentially going in, a, a lot of times when uh, special operations are going down, their backup or their support on their exfil, uh, which is when they leave the operation, is usually handled by quick reaction forces because they just come in in a hurry set up with, you know, anywhere from hundreds to even a thousand, depending on how much they need, you know, troops on the ground to bring out the small team that maybe just, you know, took care of some business and is needing to exfil out. And on top of this, this is not a surprise to anybody that watches our show. We have had Fugle family members that are active and retired military the whole time telling us kind of what to expect. And they've been right. Absolutely. Uh, even before any of this went down, way before this, months ago, um, I told you guys about a military member that told us that everything would be different in the next year than in the next eight months. And it's like, boom, everything is hitting. Everything is in the timeline we thought it would be. 
as far as now the Middle East. The Middle East is something we have talked about as far as the, the fact that everybody forgot about the Middle East with uh, UKR and Russia. Meanwhile, we've actually made a point to you to show you the tit for tats. We told you this was brewing, that, the, that, that people forget that there's a holy conflict going on that's been going on for as long as we've been alive, uh, much longer. So it, it's like this is not a surprise. Now people are still going up into this moment. I just talked to some folks today. In fact, I talked to one of my friends, and um, I said, you know, basically, he had no idea of all of this going on. He said he's seen kind of the highlight reel. He knew that you know something happened in Israel, and this is a very smart guy, uh, but he doesn't follow the news, and he does it on he does it on purpose. Uh, there's a lot of people just like him that are not following it, and they don't, and they're going to be completely caught off guard by anything, anything that happens as far as if we have a grid down, if we have a cyber event that uh, kicks our critical infrastructure down, all of these things happening, people like him are going to be really caught off guard. And it's extremely dangerous to be in that position because you have to think about, you are following this stuff. If you're on my Twitter or if you're even on Twitter in general, you see a lot of this stuff, you know, in the, the, the couple hours after it happens or even 30 minutes after or 10 minutes after it happens. But most people are not like us. Most people are not like this audience, which follows this stuff every day. Uh, most people are the opposite. They do not follow it. They would rather watch anything, absolutely anything besides the news. And what makes this dangerous is when this stuff goes down, these people are all going to come run into us and say, what do we do? None of them are getting prepped right now. None of them are worried about it. None of them even have a slight contingency in the less than 1% chance that something happens. Uh, all of us, we are watching this all go down in slow-mo, and now it's, it's actually sped up. It's, it's like we know exactly where this is going. U.S. Department of Defense issues be ready to deploy orders uh, over the weekend in response to the Hamas war. It says uh, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin put up a significant number of U.S. troops on standby to be, quote, ready to deploy over the weekend. And, of course, they're saying that this is because it could expand, uh, given that other countries are saying that they may jump in or that they're hinting they may jump in. Or some are saying that if you do this, we will. It says a U.S. official confirmed with Fox News that Austin issued orders two troops that they should be ready to de be deployed to the Eastern Mediterranean within 24 hours of receiving an order. Specifically, top officials say troops would be sent to advise and provide medical support to uh, Israeli forces or to the IDF. Do you guys believe what they are saying here, or do you think that they are actually getting a lot more ready than what we think? I personally think it's a lot more, and I don't even think that this is the big one. I think uh, China and Taiwan and some sort of event there. I think Japan. I think that uh, South Korea and North Korea. I think there's a lot that has not even happened yet. And people are, people are, this is going to, every next step that this takes, people are going to go, oh my gosh. Even though all of you guys are, you know exactly what's going to happen after this and after that and after that. So again, it is good to follow this stuff because everything that we thought was going to happen has now happened. Uh, and the stuff that we have also theorized that people, oh yeah, sure, that will never happen. Th those are the next things on the list. I mean, it, it's absolutely nuts. And then Iran says U.S. already militarily involved in the early Palestinian conflict. So uh, personally, I think that they are probably right. And most people will understand that there's a lot of things like this where, yeah, uh, they get U.S. involved and they don't say it right away, especially something as sen sensitive as this, because, well, they don't want, uh, one, people panicking, two, uh, they want the plausible deniability, they want to be able to say, uh, you know, cover it up if something bad happens, or if uh, if it doesn't go as planned, they can always say, oh, no, 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 that wasn't us. Uh, but again, this country, which nobody really trusts, uh, says that they're already involved. But again, they are probably right. Uh, for This is one thing I might agree with. <laughs> Palestinians walk past piles of garbage. Blah, 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 blah. It says the U.S. is bolstering its firepower in the Middle East in response to the war between its ally Israel and the Iranian-backed Palestinian militants Hamas amid fears of regional spillover. Asked if Iran would engage with uh, if the U.S. weighed in, 
Foreign Ministry spokesman Nasser Kanani said, Iran considers that if the United States is already militarily involved in the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians. It says, quote, the crimes of the mm, regime are carried out with the support of the United States and Washington must be held accountable. So this is the same country that actually the Ayatollah put out a Twitter video of our former president essentially getting taken out. They did a, a animated video of, of T-Man at his golf course being taken out by a drone. So that's the, the same country that's doing that is now saying that we are already involved. So whether it is true or not, uh, I, it, you know, everybody can have their own opinion on, but if they're saying that, then you can at least gather that they're going to be pissed off or that they're uh, giving reason why they should be jumping in. And if they jump in, this turns into a much bigger conflict. Uh, Dex, opinions on, uh, on what they're, they are saying. Uh, look, they're on the brink. Uh, we know they're on the brink. Uh, they've been on the brink since we said, we thought that, you know, this whole thing may be a, a part of a plan to engage them. Um, and the interesting thing or the potentially big deal here is not just that if they come in to this, it brings everybody else, all the other Arab nations will probably start taking sides and get involved. It also, you have to think about who is aligned with Iran and that would be Russia and China. And would they take up sides? And it does that actually take the stage to a much bigger uh, adversarial front but across you know, the West versus uh, you know, China and the West versus Russia and the West versus you know, the Arab nations. So that would be the extreme. And that's not out of the realm of possibility right now. No, and there's people like me that believe this is where it is headed and it's not going to go anywhere else and people should just kind of accept that this is going to happen, uh, kind of adapt to it and survive whatever is coming our way. Most things are survivable. This is not the end of the world. This is the start of a new one, uh, a new one that many of us will not like. Uh, as far as all of the side things that people debate if it's going to or not going to happen, a world war was in the making for decades. It, for those that go, oh, people have been saying this for years. That's because it takes years to happen. It takes decades uh, to do these things. Between World War I and World War II, World War II was a, a result of World War I, and they were decades apart. It's because there were things left over that kept brewing. Now, since the end of World War II, there have been many smaller conflicts, and all of, almost all of them have had some sort of relation to the end of World War II and things that came out of that. But you're talking about this is now however many decades later, seven decades, eight decades later after World War II ended, uh, six decades, seven decades, and people have not experienced this in years. Uh, most of us in our entire lifetime, we don't know what it's like to have a world war. And people just really cannot fathom this happening. But history is, is repeating itself so clearly that I don't see how people can miss it. There are so many signs, and these aren't crazy, wacky signs like the three on, uh, on top of the door in a movie or something. We're talking about like literal, uh, literal money being moved, uh, literal ditches being dug, uh, dragon's teeth being put on borders. Uh, trenches being dug 600 miles long. I mean, like the, these things are happening right now. They are prepping for a war. They are pro uh, in production mode. They are making weapons for the world. And guess who's going to profit? All the weapons companies. And all those weapons companies that already made all this stuff, we just conveniently left behind for the other sides to actually come grab this stuff. I mean, how crazy is it that we left $700 million or something like that behind? in the, the Middle East for them to just grab and use. We saw videos of Blackhawks being tested and trained by dummies. Like they were literally reading a book like Blackhawks for dummies or something. And, and they're learning how to fly. We saw Blackhawks like flying around three feet above the ground like some idiot was trying out an RC car. Uh, th that's what we left there. And it seems very, very purposeful. Now they're saying that some of the weapons being used are even some of them are probably ours that we left there. Why did we leave them there? Uh, why, all of the stuff that has gone to UKR, now they're 
questioning if any of this stuff is stuff that we actually gave to them and some sort of corruption ended up uh, filing them through to the other side. Whether that is true or not, a lot of shady business seems like it is happening right now. And the end all be all is that money is behind all of this. And if you want to talk about real money, real money is in weapons. Something that they can set the price in that they only one company makes that they have the patents for. They could make a little uh, drone, a little drone this big, and it could have a specialized purpose. And they could say, this is $400,000. That is where the real, real markups are. It's not something that they buy or manufacture, and it's something like this. This is something that takes lives and does it very well. They can charge whatever they want. That's where the real money is. That and medical. So most of us see this happening, and it's, it's, already, it's already going down right now. And, and people are going to deny it. People are going to say, everybody's scaring me. Everybody's scaring me. Well, I, I hope that those same people, uh, even though their fake pride says, oh, I'm not afraid, I hope they do get prepped. I hope they do have some sort of contingency plan. And then Iran says preemptive action by resistance front expected in coming hours. Dex, do you want to go over uh, this piece? This is out of Reuters. Exactly. So uh, they said their top envoy said that a quote unquote preemptive action could be expected in the coming hours. That's coming from the state TV that reported on Monday today. Uh, adding that is would not be allowed to take any action in the strip without facing consequences. So um, furthermore, in the quote, they said all options are open and we cannot be indifferent uh, to the crimes that have been committed against the uh, people. So they this notion of, of action coming within hours could be uh, as simple as more rockets coming in from Lebanon or even from uh, Syria, or it could be a greater level of incursion and something much bigger. Let's go back to the fact that they're they're evacuating 28 different uh, locations across those borders right now in is because they're worried that something is going is coming in, not just rockets, but potentially uh, a front. Yeah, it's it's all going so fast; it's insane. Um, now, real quick, I do want to shout out um, during this video, uh, Jacob Israel actually talked and uh, said many nice things. I just wanted to return the favor and tell Jacob. Uh, thank you. Obviously, you guys know we've sent people his way for many, many years, and he's actually on our friends list. If you go over to marfuglenews.com slash friends, uh, you will find Jacob Israel. Uh, the video, again, which I think was really, really good, was major news. Everything is about to change. Uh, again, really, really, uh, really solid video that he just did. And then a couple of videos ago, there was another one I really, really liked, um, which actually it's showing me other channels. But uh, let's see here. The interview they don't want you to hear. Wait, wait, no. This no uh, NASA Osiris Rex. If you guys have followed my kind of crazy theories on uh, the asteroids and uh, asteroids and Osiris Rex and Osiris Apex and all of that, uh, that was a really great video as well. So go check it out. That's again Jacob Israel. All right, and uh, let's see here. Uh, and tonight we're going to be talking about all sorts of other crazy stuff. We're going to talk about everything else in the world. We're going to hit uh, topics as far as Switzerland refusing to take sides. Uh, we're going to talk about Meta admitting that it has now used your uh, posts for its AI. We're going to talk about how hackers just stole uh, a million people's DNA and people don't care. It is so absolutely silent on that front and I cannot believe it. Um, once you really realize, and I, I think it's because a lot of people did not follow in science class, what they are doing right now with weapons, and we're talking about weapons that can also have something to do with that very DNA that they just stole, then you would be absolutely terrified that those hackers went in and just took DNA. We'll talk about that tonight. Uh, of course, if you know about all the NeuroStrike stuff, all of that, it's absolutely insane. El Chapo uh, we're going to tell you what their their family Sinaloa cartel is doing right now. We're going to talk about Japan. We're going to talk about the church uh, involved in this crazy thing with uh, Shinzo Abe. Uh, very freaky things when you start digging. We're going to dig deep into that tonight. And then, of course, we're going to talk about how Vlad is about to visit Xi again. Something big is about to go down. Believe me that. And again, you can believe whatever you want. But uh, again, you can mark my words on that one. 
All right. Um, Dex, thank you for your service tonight. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Much love, brother. All right, guys, make sure to head over to the website. You have the full bibliography of every single article, tweet, video, picture, document. And you also, of course, can check out products like the Energy Flex 1500. And you can get yourself protected against an EMP. So check that out as well, marfuglenews.com slash EMP. And make sure to go check out Jacob over on marfuglenews.com slash friends. We'll see you in a few minutes. We're going to try to bring all of you guys over to, new, uh, over to Marfugal TV. So just stay put, and we will bring you over uh, right now. I love it, bit on the back, 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 on the